Alicia, what would you like the world to know about you? Um, there's a lot to know. <laughs> um, but yeah, no, the biggest thing has been um, just that, you know, I, being an autistic mom of three kids on the spectrum, um, we've had our ups and downs for sure. Um, a big journey, but we're still here. Here, we're still pushing forward, and um, you know, it's it's a journey all along the way, but it's a fun journey as well as a bumpy one. Our um, our oldest is seventeen, and then the three youngest are the all the autistic ones, and they are currently fourteen, twelve, and six. Uh, my niece is. 13, be 14 here shortly. Um, and my brother is, oh, I'm going to get this wrong. And he's going <laughs> to hurt me later for this one. Um, okay. Uh, he is 23 this year. One of the people we interviewed uh, a while back, she was diagnosed with autism at 53 years old. Yeah. And she just told me how life changing it was for her to, after years of misdiagnoses and not really knowing what was going on. Did you have a similar feeling when, when you found out about your diagnosis? Oh, yeah, absolutely. I mean, even just along the journey of, you know, kind of self discovery and self realization, like things started clicking in. Um, what really got me <laughs> was, um, we were going through, so our oldest was autism. Um, our two girls are the older ones, and they got late diagnosis as well. And uh, it was during their diagnosis when the doctors were like, so you were the same way as a child? I'm like, yeah. And they're like, well, you might want to consider that. I'm like, okay. And so I go to research. I'm like, oh, wow, that makes so much sense. And then when I got the official diagnosis and they took away other diagnoses, that was like, it wasn't just like the fact of just like, oh, I got the autism diagnosis. It was also that they took away, you know, like the bipolar diagnosis. That was completely taken away. Um, they were concerned that possibly at one point in time in my childhood, like that I had a conversion disorder because mm -hmm. they couldn't place what different, you know, what was going on. So they thought it was a conversion disorder. And that makes you just feel crazy in of itself, you know, as a teenager trying to understand that one. And, you know, these diagnoses all fell off and they're like, here's your real diagnosis. It's like, okay, so that's why. <laughs> Is there something you wish people would not say to you? Mine is typically, oh, Carrie, you have autism, but you don't look like you have autism. Is there something you wish the community would stop saying? Yeah, that's a big one. Um, you don't look autistic. Um, the other, I would say, is honestly the misunderstanding of people stemming and why we stem. You know, it's, there's people, yeah, the biggest association is that stemming is only hand flapping. That's another, you know, that's a big one I see is, you know, it's like, you know, girls are weird. We'll sit there, we have hair, we'll sit there and twirl with our hair, uh, spinning around. I mean, I don't even notice when I'm rocking back and forth 90% of the time. You know, I have to sit here and make sure that I try not to, like, spin too much in my chair while I'm talking <laughs> to you. Because uh, that was, like, my biggest perk as a kid. I'd go around doctor's offices and they're, you know, they're, they act a little, you know, rolly chair that they have in the doctor's yep. office. Yep. My mom would hate it because I would get on that chair and zoom back and forth spinning around. Uh, that I was my way of spinning. Yeah, no, I, I would do the same thing. That's actually when, when I started this video series five years ago, I had to get rid of my spinny chair. <laughs> because I would be left, I would be right the entire time, and it was just a complete and utter mess. Yeah, I, I love the quote uh, I, I saw on, uh, I think it was your Facebook page, where you said, uh, your child is the same person before the autism diagnosis as they are after the diagnosis. Your actions and lifestyles may change, but your love for them never will. How, how did you come up with such a beautiful quote? It was funny. I was just writing um, it was, I was actually, uh, I had a parent reach out to me, uh, kind of going through their journey and kind of struggling a lot, just like, you know, everything. And I was just writing it out and, you know, she's like, this really spoke to me. And I'm like, huh, okay. What, what is one misconception you currently see out there in the autism community today that you wish was debunked? 
You know, I still see a big issue with autism in girls. I mean, it's just, you know, they're such a... Girls are social naturally. And even though we may be completely awkward about it, we mask really well. And so, you know, there's lots of girls like my daughters who get misdiagnosed because the symptoms are still very boy-based. Um, you know, that they the criteria seems to be still very much you know, focused on boys with autism as opposed to girls with autism. And it's changing. Um, but from a medical standpoint, it's changing. But from a community point, it's not. So I was diagnosed in 92 when I was four. And my parents just remembered so many stories of simply boys that they would know who had autism. And there was never any girls who came up in those conversations. And I think we may have paved a, a way. It's like the CDC was talking about how we went from boys being diagnosed five times more often, and now it's only four times more often. So yeah. hopefully we're going to lead to positive change in our community so girls don't fall through the cracks, which I think would be really, really beneficial towards our community. But what are some of the things that they're talking about potentially doing one day for careers? So my girls are both animal lovers. I know, you know, you've got, you know, I've laughed about, you know, the chickens, uh, me chasing chickens around the backyard before other calls. Uh, but yeah, and so they, they love animals. They would rescue any animal they could. Um, and so they want to, my, my oldest with autism wants to be a veterinarian. Very set forth on that. That's her plan. Um, I, I have a feeling that it may turn into a family business um, to where uh, my middle daughter, you know, our middle with autism kind of helps join in on that just with the amount she loves animals. But outside of that, she just, she loves to draw and she actually, her biggest goal right now is she would like to be a special education teacher as well. Awesome. Very cool. And so I was like, that's pretty awesome. Like I, and that's one of the goals um, my oldest has kind of expressed as well. Um, a 17 year old, either that between that and um, just being a business, you know, owner. So it's kind of neat to see their, you know, that all of their desires kind of all intertwine. A little bit which is kind of neat and then our son hasn't quite decided yet but I definitely just hope that whatever he wants to do that he puts his mind to and does it you know I always noticed I was better friends with guys um and I think it's just because there wasn't as many social rules that you had to come up with um so you know that was a big a big thing for me growing up was just trying to learn how to kind of fit in which I never really did learn <laughs> Um, but you know, I mean, looking back, at least I know it's kind of one of those things I look at it as it gives me kind of some better, better insight. And I think though, even though it, obviously I wouldn't wish that on anybody to feel like a social outcast throughout their childhood. It kind of gave me an insight that I've been able to kind of guide my own children. It's kind of, I think my, one of my bigger accomplishments, I think honestly, just that I've been able to give my girls by getting my diagnosis and be able to kind of put those pieces together you know to be able to say okay guys so this is why this situation isn't working because you're doing this and this is not what the social norm is and just being able to kind of help my children and others kind of understand how things work it doesn't mean you're going to fit in perfectly but to kind of be able to I guess better say to accept yourself more which once you accept yourself, you have a better time making friends, making those relationships, because if you understand yourself and you don't take yourself too serious, you're, it's a lot more enjoyable for others to be around you. Yeah. Is there anything else you would like for people at home to know about your story? Yeah, you know, I mean, I, the biggest thing is that I know that my story, while unique, it's not the only one. And that, you know, there are tons of adults right now on the spectrum that may not have a diagnosis yet or may not have the right supports. And the really biggest thing is that I just want people to start kind of researching, kind of looking into things and trying to figure out what works best for you and kind of make a community for yourself. I mean, that's kind of why I, you know, really the main reason that I got on social media was to just kind of help build that community up.
everyone, Gary Magro here from A Special Community. I can't thank you enough for watching this video. And if you like this video, please click on some of the more videos around our YouTube page. We are just trying to give a voice to countless people in our neurodiverse community. So please, if you can, subscribe to our video page. And then you'll also get to see a little bit more about my story from nonverbal autism to today being a professional speaker. Thanks so much, y'all.